and we're down to the last canteen of water. We share that canteen of water. If we're down to the last few rounds of ammunition, we redistribute that ammunition because the blood that we bleed is Marine Corps blood. From the very first time that you earned the title Marine, you are changed and you're changed forever. It's the branding of that Eagle Globe and anchor on your heart that just nobody else can quite understand who hasn't been a Marine, who hasn't earned that title. I would not be in the United States Senate as chairman of the Armed Services Committee had it not been for all the wonderful things that the United States Marine Corps did for me. Training, discipline, accountability, courage. I learned that from the masters. We live our history. The, the battle streamers on our colors, the heroism and the sacrifice that went before us, we're constantly aware of that. stressed the heritage that you have in the Marine Corps. You have a long line of Marines going way, way back. I think you feel that. You feel that kind of a heritage and you feel that kind of responsibility. If you fail, you have let the Marine Corps down. You've let that tradition that goes back to Tun Tavern down. You let Dan Daly and those people at Bellow Wood now, when he says, come on, you bastards, you want to live forever. When I was a youngster, I saw a Marine. And I said then, I want to be a Marine one day. My dad had told me, son, I want you to go and don't write home and tell me that they're riding your back. The only time someone can ride your back is when you're not standing tall. My mother hugged me and said, son, go show them what you're made of. When Daddy got home, he just looked at me and set his tired old body down on the steps and said, why did you join the Marines? Don't you know they're the first to fight, always in trouble? And I have to think, Daddy, you don't really know me very well because that's where I am. Some of the most rewarding things is to bring these young kids in and in 12 or 13 weeks when their parents come in and tell you which one is my son and you point him out and it's i don't even recognize him my god he's calling me sir you know he's changed he's transformed physically he's transformed in his maturity and his discipline and his sense of self-confidence and pride when you come out of boot camp you don't think you're good you know you're good Whatever we do in the rear, when we're training or just on a daily operations, it's almost like everybody becomes part of the machine. You keep training and training, do your part and do it right. You go into combat, it's not even a matter of should I do it. It just comes naturally to you, like clockwork. Lieutenants, 
I still got the job done because my Marines knew what was in my mind, what I was thinking, and what they could expect out of me and expect from the Marines on their flanks. And that was move to the sounds of the enemy's gun. In Vietnam, in Korea, in the islands of the Pacific, you see the Marines in the lead, the Fallujahs and the Ambar provinces, we have always been up front in the toughest parts of the battle. Leadership is everything on the battlefield. When you're tired, bloody, and you don't want to move on, and you look up and you see all it takes is one Marine, whether he's a PFC or he's a captain, to stand up and say, this is what has to get done. It trickles down to everybody in the platoon. No matter who you are, whether you are a cook or an administrator or a logistician or a supply clerk, you are a rifleman. If the fight ever does come back to those lines, they can fight. Every Marine can fight. I flew close air support for Marine ground troops in contact with the enemy unwatched medevac helicopters come in to hot landing zones, getting shot at, getting hit, and occasionally getting shot down. And I witnessed that time and again. Amazing people, just amazing people. You had to go down there with your rockets and the bombs and the napalm and make those attacks yourself. And it was point blank trying to get in there and you see people day after day go up just as committed to doing that, even though they know there's a good chance of getting out. They were doing it because the people on the ground and needed that kind of support, and that's part of the teamwork. When all my men fell, I fell beside them, and I'm grateful that I had that opportunity to bleed with my men. I could not have stood it if they had died and I'd been back there because I was an officer. It doesn't work that way. When I first came back from Iraq, the first thing I wanted to tell my parents was, what we really are fighting for is each other. It's not mom, dad, apple pie, and baseball games. It's for the man to the left and to the right of you. Because when it all boils down to it, they're the ones that are going to make sure that you get home. I was on a movement with 1st Recon Battalion, Bravo Company, and I was serving as an assistant team leader with 1st Battalion. During the movement, we were ambushed, and I was struck by a rocket propelled grenade. It blew his left arm off, shot through, destroyed the weapon in his hand, and blew his right arm off. He received fragmentation to the face. He had a compound fracture of his leg. His femur was sticking through, rapidly losing blood. He tracks back into the vehicle, looks down, see he doesn't have any hands. Okay, how am I going to put a tourniquet on my on my leg without hands? And, uh, how am I going to pull the trigger to return fire? Those things I couldn't physically do myself, but what I could still do is execute orders and supervise. And, you know, that didn't stop the enemy from firing at me. They were still firing at us, and we had to fight our way out of that kill zone. Our corpsman got to me, patched me up, kept me going until the medevac chopper came, and they got me out of there. consciousness, Major General Jones came in and was talking to him and said, my God, how could you not go into shock after suffering such horrible wounds? And he looked at the general in the eye and said, I couldn't go into shock. I was in charge. A wounded Marine is rescued under heavy enemy fire. His buddy is questioned. <laughs> what if asked you to go running off into the paddy like that? I'm a Marine. How do you mean? He's a Marine. I'll take care of him. I guess sometimes death and only that pride keeps those Marines alive they make them go when they don't feel like they can go anymore it's a love of your fellow Marine 
and respect of your fellow Marine, you uphold and you'd sacrifice most anything for one of your fellow Marines. desire to please and follow through on a task or mission or whatever you give them is something that overwhelms you at times because you see it in their faces that they're, no matter what, they're not going to let you down. You know the ones that you can look right in the eye and they look right back at you. They're going to tell you, well, I'm going to get this done. take exception to the use of the term former Marine. Former, to me, means one time you were, you are no longer. A Marine's a Marine. He's just in uniform or out. Now, once he gets through boot camp, he's a Marine for life, and he'll take it right to his grave. 